Everybody knows everything, but the difference is, do you embody it? Are you living it? Is it who you are? Wherever your attention is, that's where the energy is going to flow. That's where you're going to start to create those miracles. And so whatever we put out to the universe, the universe is going to give us back more of that. Okay, fabulous. So welcome. Today we're talking about five keys to effortless manifestation. And I really love talking about these specific keys because it really sets the tone for the vibration that we want to hold. And when we're raising our vibration and we're holding that really high vibration that's magnetic, we become an attractive force for all things that are good, um, all things that we desire, all things that we desire and want. And so these five keys are critical to really holding that space for manifestation. So this is actually, I wrote this out originally for a five-day manifestation challenge, and I still might do that because I would love to share this tool every day and then have you work on it throughout the day. So the idea with the manifestation challenge is to really embody the one key and express it throughout the day and live into it throughout the day and experience it fully. Because as you've heard me say a lot, you know, information doesn't change people. Information, you know, one of my good friends, rest of soul, Bill Harris used to say, information is the booby prize in the personal development field. Everybody knows everything, but the difference is, do you embody it? Are you living it? Is it who you are? And so at the challenge, what I want to invite you to do is to really step into each of these steps fully so it becomes who you are. And that means practice. It's you, You've got to do something different. If you want change, you have to change. If you want something different, you have to do something different. You have to be something to someone different. You have to act differently. And so everything we've created is because of the actions, the beliefs, the, the motions, the things that we've already been doing. And so part of this challenge is to encourage you to really take that time to just have that one focus. Be single focused on that one thing. And what happens, my intention is if you practice it throughout the day and give yourself those reminders, then it'll be easy to repeat it the next day. And if you repeat it the next day, then it'll be easier to repeat it the third day and the fourth day. And so this is a start and it's just a little, little start that gets us going in the right direction. So what I encourage you to do is each day, take each of these manifestation tools and make it simple. The more we complicate things, the less likely we are to implement them. So make it simple, get post-it notes. And I'm, you know, and just write the one little thing that you are going to do and put that post-it note somewhere prominent. If you're always on your computer all day, put it on your computer. If you're gonna be cooking a meal, put it on the refrigerator. If you are, you know, in your room, in your office, put it somewhere where you will see it um, often as you go through the day and shift that every day. So the second day, um, I would, I, I personally would have you leave that first post-it and then add a second post-it for, for day two manifestation challenge. And that second day could be a different color, somehow highlighted so that your eye goes to that second day. And then you can always refer to whatever you learned or embodied or practiced that first day to go back and reinforce it. But then on day two, you're focusing on day two. And then on day three, you add another little post-it note. And again, make it simple. Make it simple. I have my affirmations posted next to the mirror in my bathroom. I make it simple because I want to see it all day, every day. And I go there, you know, when I'm brushing my teeth, I'll stare at it. And in my mind, I'll, I'll say the affirmations, you know, as I'm going to the shower, I have them so memorized that, you know, I'm kind of saying them out loud. And so um, it's something that triggers you to remember to pay attention to it, because wherever your attention is, that's where the energy is going to flow. 
that's where you're going to start to create those miracles. So we want to put attention into what we want to, to bring more in, of into our life. So welcome to day one. Now, day one is all about counting your blessings. So on your post-it note, I want you to write, count your blessings. Count your blessings. If you want to be an attractive force, we have to recognize all the blessings that we already have. If you want to be a magnet for more good, you have to focus on those good that is already in your life. You know, I've, I've said this over and over again. I believe we live in a more universe. And so whatever we put out to the universe, the universe is going to give us back more of that. So if I say I am so blessed, I have incredible health, money flows to me easily and effortlessly. I have a gorgeous home that I live in. I have incredible friends and family that care about me. I have a thriving career where I get to serve some incredible people, then the universe is like, you know what? You think you have blessings? You think you have money and a home and friends and clients? You haven't seen nothing yet. Here's more. And the universe is naturally going to give me more, more of this beautiful sacred home that I live in, more of these incredible clients that I get to have, more of the abundance and the wealth that I'm recognizing, more of the friends and the family that are surrounding me, more of the optimal health that I'm noticing. And so we want to counter blessings on those things that are positive. On the flip side, if we say, well, I don't have enough money, my, you know, my back kind of aches and I'm not that healthy or, you know, that I've got problems in my body. Um, you know, I don't have a whole lot of friends that I can really count on. You know, my family hasn't really been there for me. Then the universe is going to say, really, you think your family hasn't been there for you? You think you don't have enough money? You think your health is bad? You haven't seen nothing yet? Here's more. And the universe is going to give you more of that thing that you're focusing on, not because you're being punished, not because it's bad karma, not because of anything other than the universe is expansive. So whatever you focus on, it's going to expand. So notice what you want to expand. If you want to expand the good, then count the blessings for the good. So day one, I want you to go around all day and count your blessings. I'm so grateful that the sun is shining in my backyard. I'm so grateful that I have a backyard. I'm so grateful that I'm here talking to you. I'm so grateful that my voice works, that I'm healthy. I'm so grateful that there's money in my bank account. I'm so grateful that my bills are paid. I'm so grateful that, you know, I have this home that I get to live in. I'm so grateful that I have a space that, that family and friends can come to. I'm so grateful for this one particular friend. I'm so grateful for my new friend. So count your blessings. Go around. Even if, you know, go around and say, I'm grateful for my refrigerator. As you're opening up your refrigerator, I'm grateful for my stove. I'm grateful for the heat. I'm grateful for this light count your blessings. So that's day one. I want you to the entire day, remind yourself, place your attention, place your intention on counting all of the blessings in your life. You have a dollar in your pocket, count your blessings. I'm so grateful for this dollar. You have a credit card with a $100 balance. It doesn't matter. I'm so grateful that I have a $100 balance that this bank is, is trusting me with. It's loaning me $100. I'm so grateful for the car. As I pay my electric bill, I'm so grateful for the electricity. As I pay my car payment, I'm so grateful for my car. So that's day one. So I encourage you to practice it and then share with me what you're grateful for. What are the things that you noticed? What are those things that you were grateful for that you counted your blessings on that perhaps you took for granted or didn't really notice in the past? And how did you feel at the end of the day? So challenge number two, day two, is to find your purpose. Now, a little caveat with that word. I'm not a big fan of purpose just because everyone's always looking for the purpose. Like, what's my life purpose? What's my life purpose? And really what I find when most people look, um, ask those questions about what their life purpose is, is they're kind of looking for what should I do? That's an action. That's not really a purpose. That might be your vocation, which is, is your calling, how you're going to serve. But to me, purpose is your life. You are purpose. Your life is purpose. And so what I encourage you to do today is write out, find your purpose. 
And what I want you to think about is what is my life about? In this moment, what is my life about? What brings me joy? What gets me excited? What fills me up with energy? You know, when I look at people who are depressed or who have no energy, I usually find that they're not truly living a full life. See, most people live, you know, 99 years, not most people, some people live 99 years, but most people will live one year 99 times. That's because they never ask the question of why am I here? What am I to do? Where am I to go? Even asking those questions connects you to a higher part of yourself that is directing you somewhere, that is wanting you to share something, that is wanting you to say some words to someone. So as you go through your day, ask yourself, you know, what is my purpose? What is my life? What is my life? What brings me joy? What brings me excitement? Where am I being drawn to? What would I love? Because whatever you love is what you're meant to be. Whatever brings you joy is where you're meant to go. So I want you to ask that question. So on your second post-it note, day two of the manifestation challenge is find your purpose. So day three of the manifestation challenge is to let go, let go. On that post-it note, I want you to write the words, let go. If you wanna bring something in new, you have to let go of the old. You have to release. You have to clear space. You have to make space for what you desire, for what is desiring you, for what wants to come into your life. If you have a full closet, there's no room for new clothes. If you have a car full of junk, there's no room for anything nice to be placed in there. It's just going to get messy and dirty and broken or, you know, wrinkled or whatever, you know, the case is. And so when I talk about letting go, I talk about forgiveness, number one. And here's the thing with forgiveness. I, I'm not one to say allow whatever someone did to you to, to go by the wayside, to forgive and forget, to, you know, let people mistreat you, to let people steal from you or hurt you or do wrong by you. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is if thinking about someone makes you contract, if thinking about someone gives you that pit that feeling in the pit of your stomach, if thinking about what someone did to you gives you a headache or makes you anxious or gets you bring, brings up emotions in you that are that are negative, anger, sadness, hurt, then they still have a hold on you. You can't build anything new. If you are reacting to a memory or to a thought, of something someone did in the past. So when you forgive, you are giving to yourself. You are unchaining those binds. You're releasing those cords. You're breaking those connections so that that person who did wrong by you no longer has control over you. Because whoever you blame has control over you. Whoever you're looking to, you know, to make something right has control over you. So today I want you to go through your day and ask yourself, what do I need to let go of? Who do I need to forgive? And I'm sorry, if you're a living, breathing human being, there's someone you need to forgive. Even if it's that knucklehead that cut you off on the freeway today on your way to work. Could be your mother. It could be a sibling. It could be an ex. It could be a partner. It could be someone you worked with. It could be your best friend. It could be your neighbor, anyone. And, and just ask yourself and just say that silent prayer of I let, I let go. I forgive you and I let you go. I forgive you and I let you go. And notice the peace and the calmness that comes over you. And notice the space that you have now that you're no longer being attached to them. Because again, remember, if simply the thought of them has a negative reaction in you, you're hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself. You know, Nelson Mandela, I believe, is, is the one who said, 
Not forgiving someone is, is the same as drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. So we want to let go. The same thing with messes and incompletes. We want to let go of the messes and incompletes in our life. Those things take up space. Those things take up precious energy that we require in order to manifest the life of our dreams. And so if you have unfulfilled duties, things that are left undone, conversations that are left open, uh, perhaps contracts that have not been fulfilled, you have a mess in your drawer, you have your paperwork is all jumbled up, your taxes are not filed, all of that drains your energy. So I don't expect you to complete all of it today, but I want you to think about what are those messes and incompletes that I have in my life and how can I let those go? How can I let those go? What can I do today to get them done? Because here's the thing, you know, if I have something that I'm required to do, whether or not I physically get it done, I'm thinking about it. And there's a subconscious part of me that is, is the space that's being taken up in wanting to complete it. And so, for example, if I haven't done my taxes, your, your subconscious, like, don't forget to do your taxes. You got to do your taxes. Oh gosh, don't forget to do your taxes. Oh gosh, you got to call the accountant. You got to get all that paperwork to get your taxes done. I wonder if you're going to owe money. I wonder if you're going to get any money back. You got to do your taxes. That's a draining. And that's what's running in the background of your subconscious mind. So you wonder why sometimes you can't sleep. You wonder why sometimes you get anxious and you can't pinpoint it on something. It's all of those incompletes and messes. So today's theme, your challenge, your manifestation challenge for day three is to let go. Let go. Write that in a post-it note. And again, comment. Let me know what did you let go of? How did you feel? Who did you forgive? What did you complete? What messes did you clean up? And what did that do for you? How did you feel at the end of it? So that's day three. Day four in the manifestation challenge is all about who was I up until now? So on your post-it note, you can write what made me, what made me. And when you ask yourself, what made me? I want you to think about who was I up until now? Where did that come from? You know, if you think about, I travel a lot, I love traveling, and everywhere you go, you hear different accents, you see different clothing, you see different architects, um, architecture, art, everything is, is so unique and so different. And it's beautiful to see that, but it really begs the question of why is everyone in this region talk the same way? Why does everyone in this region kind of have similar hairstyles, colors, shapes? Why are people in certain regions, you know, why are all the buildings or decorations or colors very similar? And what I want you to see here is that who you think you are is a combination of everything you've experienced, everything you've seen, everything you've been programmed with. All your beliefs have been programmed. And so if you are poor, guess what? You probably heard that growing up. You probably grew up in a poor neighborhood. If you are rich, same thing. You probably, you know, had that drive to be comfortable and um, to seek opportunities to gain wealth. If you have a certain belief around relationships, you pick that up somewhere. So ask yourself, who, who was I up until now? Because now is a brand new start. You can be whomever you choose to be. So that's why I specifically say up until now. So, and I want you to explore what made me. How did I become this version of me? How did I become this version of me? What were the influences in my life? What were the programs? What are the similarities between me and maybe my the people that I grew up with, my parents? Now, I can either be an exact duplicate of my parents or I can be the exact opposite. Either way, I'm still reacting to my parents. If I saw them act a certain way and I, I decided I don't want to be anything like them, they had this belief, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm still reacting to that. Still haven't chosen. 
Look at your beliefs. Look at what um, what you do as far as vocation, how you feel about relationships and your health and your eating patterns. You know, it's it's crazy to to look at how people in different countries eat. And there's places where there is a massive problem with obesity and others where people walk everywhere. Others where people park in front of one store and will drive two stores down to go to another store. That's a society influence. So again, ask yourself, what made me? Who was I up until now? So that's day four of your manifestation challenge. And so again, write that in your post-it note and just ask yourself, you know, am I really, am I really playing out the version of me that I want to play? And that's the realization I hope you make at the end of the day is I'm just running on some automatic programs, kind of like my computer. When I turn it on, it, it goes through a set of actions and it does it automatically because that's what it does. So we want to uncover what are our automatic programs and actions. Where do we get that from? And when we see that, we kind of realize, you know, it doesn't work for me. I really don't want to be, oh, I'm this way because of that. I don't need to do that anymore. I don't need to be that way anymore. So that's day four. So enjoy. And again, please comment. How is this for you? Day five, we're finally at the end of our five-day manifestation challenge. And for us today, it's asking yourself, who am I to become? So that's what I want you to write on your, on your post-it note. Who am I to become? Who am I required to become? Who do I desire to become? Who do I want to become? Because you get to choose in this moment who you are. You can be rich. You can be in a loving relationship. You could be filled with love. You could be healthy and full of energy. You could be a successful business owner. You could be a speaker, you could be a coach, you could be a philanthropist. Who are you choosing to be in this moment? You know, Buddha came thousands and thousands of years ago and talked a lot about karma, action, reaction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And we live by that, right? If we if we do something, there's there's some karma that we've we've created. And so the future is sometimes created in order to balance out the past. That's Newtonian science. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's Newtonian science. But now Jesus came along, and whether or not you believe in Buddha or Jesus, it's irrelevant. Take them as metaphors. Jesus came along and talked about grace. And he said, in a moment of grace, all karma is burned. What does that mean? That's the quantum science, that in this instance, this is all we have. In this instance, we can make a decision for ourselves. The past no longer exists. The future doesn't exist. You get to decide today who you are and completely change the trajectory of your life. And we talk about quantum science. You could change your timeline so that the path that you were on previously based on where you've come and, and the direction you're going can be completely shifted. But it only shifts in this moment. So why waste this moment thinking about the past, stressing about the past? That's why it's important to let go that we talked about on day three. So today I want you to think about who am I to become? Who am I cho choosing in this moment that I am? And those words, I am, are very powerful. For those words, anything that comes after those words, I am, becomes your destiny. That becomes your new life that becomes your new timeline so think about this moment of grace where you get to decide who am i choosing to be i am i am i am and fill in the blank with those things that you desire connect that back to your purpose connect that back to the blessings that you've counted that you're just open to more of so who am i to become so that's day five of your manifestation challenge. And again, I want you to share with me, how does that feel? What are those new identity statements? What did you connect to? What was the most powerful version of you 
that you were able to see and feel and hear and be and step into. So thank you so much for joining us. I am so grateful for you for being here, for joining us on this challenge. And I encourage you again, do the work. Don't make this just information. Information never changes anybody. It's actually doing something different. It's being someone different. And you get to decide in this moment the type of life that you will live. So, so much love and blessings to you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.